are at Goodwood Festival of Speed 2022. We are here with Quick Fit uh, as part of the British Touring Car Championship, overlooking the fantastic 50 years of M anniversary sculpture. Really looking forward to the hill climb. Been up once before, but briefly. It was more of a demo than a, than a run up the hill. Didn't try to go up too quickly, but this this is a bit different. I can first time I've been able to sort of try and, and actually see see what it's like at speed. Very busy weekend, probably the busiest I've had in, in, in my time in racing, you know, to go from, from Goodwood, two days, Thursday, Friday, helicopter to Croft to take part in the British Touring Car round, round five of the championship. So yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a lot going on and a, sort of a lot of logistical challenges. Thankfully, Quick Fit and BTCC have been great in, in providing us with some fast transportation to get us north. Just have a look at Dan's face, his eyes in particular. Hammering down to Clairvaux Corner then. In a moment he will break and as he does so, the car pitches left, he fights it, but it's going off the road. Now, just watch Dan's eyes. Hands off the wheel, incident comes to an end, and then that's a real, what the expression. So instantaneous lock up? Lock it, not stand, it's straight away. I think the rear's first. Felt like, felt like, the, felt like it just went, whoa. Or the rear's just like a snatched, yeah. like locked completely. And just disappointed because I didn't need that. You know, I needed a, I needed a sensible run. Car felt quite nice. You know, warming up laps, I was like, this feels more like a racing car again. And as a racing driver, it's, it's weird. You, you kind of, uh, you never really know if you've made a mistake, but you kind of have an, an idea when you have and when you haven't. And it all happened so fast. You know, I've, I've hit the barrier quite square. They are the proper sort of tech pro barriers that, that uh, are there to design the impact. I wasn't going slow when I hit it, but I also wasn't flat out when I hit it. You know, a lot of the speed had come off. So yeah, there's some bumper damage and the the, the, the bonnet looks a bit a bit banged up. But behind that, I don't think it's the end of the world. The guys will throw a few new parts at it and it'll be, it'll be fine. It's more understanding, A, what's just happened, and B, are we confident it ain't gonna happen again? Because um, when you're not sure what it is, obviously we need to go away and understand very quickly. Not what I needed, because I really needed a strong, a decent session to get my weekend on track, but, um, Unfortunately, it's not to be. So all I can do is put my faith in the guys to repair it and um, do my best job I possibly can in qualifying, which I know, given I know I can, I can still perform to my best and, and get a good lap out of it. So. This could be one of those sessions where survival is pretty important, couldn't it? And another lock up, and it's Jake Hill down towards Clairvaux. He gets away with it. Somebody's also, it was one of the Infinities has made a mistake ahead of him, look, and been off the road. We're still P1, mate. This is what happens at Croft. Yeah, very big lock up, first call. Who did Jake do? Tom Ingram goes quickest. It was Dan Lloyd, but it's now Tom Ingram by a tenth of a second, a 121.544. One and a half tenths down, sector one. You are currently P1, though. There's nothing like Tom Ingram when he has to, when he's under pressure, he has yeah. to grab it by the scruff of the neck. That's a blinding lap on his first flying lap. Shane Hill goes third. Yes. Lloyd's gone quickest on his following lap at 21.5. Lloyd has just gone quickest by 100. Dan Kamish pressing on as well now for Napa Racing UK. Two personal bests for Kamish in the first and the second sector. So this is by far and away his best lap. I've had times in my career where everything I've touched has turned to gold. And right now I've gone through a patch where everything has kind of just not worked out for me the, the way I wanted. And he doesn't. That was all lost in that last sector. He's not having any luck, he's Dan Kamish this year. He is not, is he? The pace is there, but the luck isn't. Red flag with 45 seconds to go. There's a red flag. Somebody else has had a moment somewhere. Red, red flag, red flag. Red flag, red flag. End of session. 
End of session. They're not going to add five minutes onto this one. End of session. So, Colin Turkington it is. Career pole position 26, and he's done it by 27 thousandths of a second. Still not bad, mate. We can work with that. It's not like um, Alton. Look at that, look at it that way. It's just no way to that. We are quick. We're quick enough to do that. Mm. Fair play to Paul. Yeah, he did bang it in. And Lloydie, two people with injuries. And... Yeah. In terms of how I think the championship's gone so far and, and what I think, I am happy, but I'm disappointed with myself. I think I've made too many mistakes and, and therefore let a lot of points slip, um, especially at uh, Donington brands, etc. But you know, it's a new environment for me, and there's unfortunately some mistakes maybe need to be made to to become a better driver overall. And I feel like I'm <laughs> getting to the end of making my mistakes. Hopefully, we can turn turn that all around and have a better end into the year. Yeah, he's feeling frustrated because he knows it's in him and in the car, but it's difficult to string it together. I think we need to work on the chassis a little bit because the time's in it, but it's just difficult to uh, to string it together. So we'll um, have a look at the data, have a chat, have a debrief, and then come back again tomorrow. Yeah, the car's working well. The car's doing what we want it to do at the moment. I think the key thing is to stay, I guess is to try and stay level-headed and not start to get carried away looking at results and, th and things like that you know we're, although we're, we're uh, at the end of this weekend we'll be at the halfway point actually it's an important round of the season to to sort of lay your marker is to sort of say we're here for the for the season if you like and not just 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 looking for race wins so if we can stay consistent that's a really important thing so yes the results have been great yes we've been quick yes the car's feeling good but the deep you know the deep down stuff is we still need to be consistent and we still need to be a bit boring in that sense. So it's good, we're in good place, but let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. This is for third, Dan Rowbottom versus Tom Ingram. This is Dan Camish, who is currently 14. That's Bobby Thompson ahead. You start 13, 14, and I finished 13, 14. You can't go forward, it's just a queue, it's just a train. I'd love to drive through people, but unfortunately, there's not what you can do. Ingram is under attack from Hill, and again, Robot and tries that outside line, except this time he can't get back into the pack. He's trying to stay on the outside of the BMW, but he couldn't do it. But at least he does fend off the attack of Ingram. And now that Hill's getting all toey against Ingram, that is meaning that Tom Ingram drops away slightly from the leading trio. Hill looks to have really good pace, doesn't he? Ingram still has the fastest lap. That hasn't been beaten, but part of that is because they're attacking and defending against each other. Last corner, the drive off the hairpin, it's good for Dan Lloyd. Check a flag at the ready, it's a second touring car career win. A second of the as well. Take the check of flag to win. Race one of the day from Colin Turkington is second, Dan Robottom third ahead of Ingram Hill and Sutton. Yeah, well done, mate, brilliant. So that's P4 with the fastest lap. So good job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, race one was a good result. P4, we're happy with that. It was kind of a boring race, but that's what he, what he asked for at the start, so. Yeah, race one, I was, I, I was always planning on it being a boring hold station. Don't do anything, um, don't anything too chaotic. Uh, we just needed to finish and start out of trouble. And then race two, I thought, right, we need to take a bit of a risk here because we knew that it, around here, once the race gets going, it's very difficult to kind of overtake and it gets into a bit of a rhythm. So really the only, or the, the good opportunities are in those uh, are in those sort of lap one, lap two. So had to capitalise on that. Side by side they come, Ingram round the outside. He's going to do to Turkington what Lloyd did in the first race and he goes through. Fantastic move. <laughs> Home circuit, of course, Yorkshireman Camish was really looking forward to racing here, but the weekend was just not delivered for him. Yeah, you know, one thing snowballs after another. His problem in practice with the off meant he didn't have his setup for qualifying. We heard him explain it on the grid, and it's hard to get your momentum back. Oh, what a weekend. I'm, uh, I'm glad to see the back of this after the season. I've had everything thrown at me, uh, and I've certainly at times started to doubt myself and, and what I can do in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a touring car. Oh, they're side by side. Oh, Cabbage Cabbage had had to escape road, yeah. He had to avoid, he could not go through there side by side. Now look at this, absolutely free for the lead. Now Ingram under huge attack from Turkington. Dan Lloyd leading the way. Uh, is Dan Robottom with Jake Hill catching up as well? Seemingly yes, taking Ash Sutton with them. So the leading sextet now, pretty much as one. 
Robo there tries to defend from Jake Hill through Tower. The BMW tucks into the inside line, but the Honda can drive out of the corner. Jake! Side now. Row bottom on the inside line, Hill on the outside, but he does it, goes right round the outside of the Honda. Yes! Come on! Good save by Jake Hill, that absolute commitment, and it's just given him fourth place. It is a second win of the day for Dan Lloyd, who crosses the line to win at top. Tom Ingram second, and this is going to give Tom Ingram the championship lead. He was only two points back from Josh Cook. Have fun. Love you. Be safe. Love you. It's Gordon Shedden on pole position, and it is go! Right, Dan Camish's view, Tom Ingram is ahead of him, Dan Cam ninth, and still desperately trying to find places. Interesting though, isn't it, you know, Camish, for all that he says about, you know, the car, he's hanging on yeah. to Tom Ingram here very well. Right, with Ingram, the dominant car of the weekend, and you're right with him. Yeah. So Ingram goes through up into seventh place, and now Camish tries to make his move as well. So Dan Camish all over the back of Dan Robottom, who's got to get his elbows out here and defend. But Ingram has finally gone through, and look, straight away he's up the road. He's a rally driver, not a race driver. It's not, it's not finesse. There is no finesse to him. It's like watching a Rock 8 have a go. But it's fast as Yeah, will Camish try and up the inside dive? He looks like he is going to, unless he does. Difficult move to pull off, but he gets the car stopped right in front of the Napa Racing Hospitality Box. They'll have enjoyed that. And Gordon Shedden takes the race win in race three at Croft. Gordon Shedden victorious. Josh Cook second. He will be delighted, if not relieved, as well with that. Rory Butcher takes third. Fourth goes the way of Stephen Jelly. Fifth for Jake Hill. For myself, it's been a good day. You know, we've been in the top five all day, which is great. You know, it, it, there's not many days you have like that. Obviously, I'd love to have been on the podium today. It's my first time visiting Croft since 2019, where I've not been on the podium. So, a bit sad about that. However, I'm sure it will come good at the coming rounds, and hopefully, we can make a bit of an impact. I love Knock Hill. You know, Knock Hill's a great, great circuit. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I'm in, looking intrigued to see what the BMW is going to be like around there because I've had two really good cars the last two years. Uh, at Knock Hill, so and the BMW is obviously supposed to be pretty good as well. So this championship is so hard now, like incredibly hard. It is, the qualifying bit is so important, you know. And that used to be the bit I was good at. That's the bit I'm, I, I thought was I based my weekend around. Yeah, I wasn't always the best guy coming from the back to the front, but if I started at the front, I could certainly stay at the front and I could win races. And that fire at Donington put me on the back foot from the start. You know, the, the crash uh, FP2 yesterday was just. Bizarre and, and, and a mechanical failure that no one's seen in years put me in the barrier and it's just little things like that that upset your weekend and the, the fact is we've got to improve and we've got to come back to the second half of the season with some luck and a bit more speed and then it's all to play for.